Well, good morning. It is time for shot show again. It's 4:56. But I'll see you guys in Vegas. Welcome to the Thermal Tour Shot Show 2023. Shot Show 2023, and we couldn't pass on going by the ATN booth. It's I know you love me, I know you miss me, just wanted to come by and say hi. It's, it's mostly about this year, yeah, Steve. Oh, really? No offense, Steve, but <laughs> you guys made a bit of news, I think, the past few days, sure. uh, starting yesterday, I guess, yeah. that was the first time, right? Yeah. So, ATN Floor 5, and you guys have the, just a bigger 5 series product family. Yeah, a, a new introduction of our entire new platform. So, we had Obsidian 4, and now we're transitioning to the Generation 5 platform which in comparison is much better in terms of the previous generation was only a dual core processor. Now we have a quad core processor with new boards, sensors, really redesigned the entire thing, made it more slimmer, more ergonomic using a new OLED screen around it. So you have a rounded image. I encourage you to take a look. Great eye relief still, 90 millimeters. Uh, you know, a real great uh, piece of engineering, in my opinion, because not only do you ha we have six versions of this now, three with LRF, three without LRF, in a 1280 by 1024, 12 micron, 60 hertz. 1280 by 1024 thermal sensors, the, the thing everybody was waiting for, and there's another manufacturer who had one already out, but the price point is not for the, the regular folk. person. Yeah. It's not the regular person. No, it's not the regular person. You guys have, you know, over time shown that uh, that that is your audience, and you guys have brought prices down ultimately in the industry, right? Right. With the products you, you we use. want to provide not only a great product, quality product, cutting edge product, but we want to give value to the consumer because we want more consumers to use our products. We try to yeah. innovate. We try to be on the cutting edge. And I think we're demonstrating it with this product, this yeah, platform launch. Um, I haven't really told you another interesting fact about this. So the LRF goes to a thousand yards. We have all the same functions, features of the Thor 4 in here, like the most calculator profiles, you know, the color modes, everything you're used to, the Thor 4. With this one, you get HD quality video because it's a 1.3 megapixel thermal sensor. You get to record HD thermal. You could also now go to our site, we have a special section on our site where you can customize and create your own custom reticle. So you could have nice. Jagged uh, as, a as a reticle, create it, download it, install it in the scope, and use it, and it will be in your video. Sweet. Or all the or, other ideas or, you might have. Or, you know, uh, you know, whatever, a Christmas tree or biohazard sign, Who whatever like your imagination have a Christmas is. Tree as a reticle, it's basically the second Best option after yeah, yeah very good. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. No, I'm, I'm excited. It seems like also like total form factor just right. gets slightly and smaller, the battery life right? is still good. Uh, Ten hours. Okay, so it's, I think it was an internal 18650 or something or um, something like no, that. No, it's actually a custom battery that's okay. made for us. Interesting. Yeah, battery life has always been great on the on the yeah. 440, yeah. right? What I noticed also like just off the off the gate, um, out of the gate, is the the knobs, right? So the, the adjustment, uh, the focus ring. Uh, has it's a smooth. better feel to it, you it's know. Nice. There's more haptic to it. Yeah. Same thing for the uh, the eyepiece adapter. Um, so that that feels. So when you're wearing quality. gloves, it's, it's really yeah. responsive. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, I also know that with the five series across the board, you also have a new exercise. Like, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Want to go look at that? Sure. Let me grab that for you. <sighs> so same platform. Similar form function, uh, better battery life. It's about 14 hours on the X, Xite 5. Four versions, 3 to 15 and 5 to 25 with LRF or without. Mm -hmm. LRF range up to 1,000 yards also. Same functions and features like an Xite 4K Pro. 
plus the reticle editor, you could also uh, use custom reticles mm -hmm. in the X8 5. Uh, 4K plus sensor, so it is actually 30% better resolution than the previous model, the X8 4K Pro. And we have ambient temperature control on the sensor. So depending on, uh, you know, if you're hunting a long time and the temperature changes, like drops or increases, the sensor will compensate for that temperature to give you the optimal image quality uh, for the scope. Interesting. Also, rounded OLED inside, um, higher grade, uh, higher res OLED, 90 millimeter eye relief, a fantastic system. Yeah. Well, the image quality, like just in here, is it's already better than the 4K. Yeah. Um, so definitely a big step forward. The menu seems to be quite different. So yeah. So to... we got rid of the Rio stat. You still have smooth zoom by pressing the up button to zoom in. Uh, if you hold it, it's smooth smooth zoom. If you press it, it'll give you step zoom. Right. And uh, the opposite also. Okay. And outside of that, I mean, the the, the features. Just from looking at the menu, still have Wi-Fi, so you can do sort of the streaming to the app and so forth. Yeah, yeah. They're very cool. Okay, awesome. All right, so much for the uh, X5. Uh, you mentioned uh, Thor LT. Is it so also something you have? A yes. Uh, so we redesigned the Thor LT to a Thor LTV now. So the new redesign Thor LT now it's the Thor LTV. Mm -hmm. It's uh, our uh, insurable thermal optic plus now because you know we like to listen to our customers the biggest complaint the customers had about the Thor LT is the lack of video recording with the Thor LTV now you have video recording capability on it and now you are able to buy it in a 640 version as well so okay. we have 160 320 and now 640 12 micron 60 Hertz all that good stuff 10 hour battery life still simple menu you know one shot zero uh, not, nothing fancy in it just white hot black hot a few reticles color options that's it, you know. So, take a look. It's, you, you said you, uh, video recording, does it have, does it? Yeah, it has a micro SD card. Uh, micro? Yeah. Okay, but uh, does it have audio too? I see a microphone over here. And no, no, okay, no audio, just, video. just the video. Okay. Yeah, interestingly enough, my, my nine-year-old already asked me, like, is there, you know, a cheaper or smaller thermal, you know, he could have eventually. Right. So, he's already thinking about it. Nice. And uh, I looked at the, um, so that's the 640 version, Thor yeah. TV, 3x9. I looked at the 320 audio too, and the it 320 looks good, has huh? a really good. Have you seen the 160 yet? The 160 is also. I have not seen that, but the we're 320 really, was. You know, we're doing a lot of stuff in the back end yeah. in terms of improving our processes. We got a lot of new equipment to calibrate, optimize uh, systems like thermal and other systems to give you even better quality image. So yeah, I need to look. look to take a look at the 160, I guess, but the 320 was. You know, compared to the 640, it's it's half the sensor size, of course, but it's yeah. not half the image quality. Right. So how I felt about it. So yeah. the image quality was very, really, really good, really, yeah. high, really good. So, uh, so that's the, the Thor LTV. So again, uh, 640. Um, there's a 320, and then you also mentioned a six, uh, the 160. 160. Right. So uh, you know, whatever your price point is, I think there's a there's the a 160 is actually s is uh, like sub thousand dollars. Okay. Entry. And talking about price point. Something you talk about here for the 1280 by 2024. Yeah. Do you have a retail price point? Yes. For retail starting point will be 5500. Top of the line will be 5500. Yeah, and the top for of the line with the 4x optical and laser rangefinder, just a little bit less than eight. But you're saying a 1280 by 1024. Yes. The, the biggest sensor available right now for 5500. Right. Yes. There's other prices out there for these yeah, sensors, like right? Yeah, like eighteen thousand, right? From eighteen thousand, right? So fifty-five hundred, and you have the that sensor. That's yeah, the price point. And that's why we've been yeah. so popular because people yeah. just cannot believe that we could offer so much for so little. Right. Well, you heard it here first. Maybe not, but you heard it here too. Um, but let's talk about the monocular. I think you have a monocular also on, on yes. the uh, uh, on deck, basically as a new absolutely. Introduction Let me get that one product. second. So we launched this last year, right, in 320, which this is, but we have a 640 version also with 19 millimeter lens that will give us 1x. So you could actually mount it on your head with a helmet mount or headgear and be able to walk around and stumble, basically. Okay. Is that one of the primary use cases for it? Or a lot of folks just using it as a handheld too? Yes. Okay. Spotting, uh, observation, small, compact, fits yeah. in your pocket pretty much. Yeah. So I'm using the, the OTS quite a bit. 
and I, I like that. Uh, that's the OTS 640. Mm -hmm. I like the form factor, but it's, it is somewhat bulky. Right? Yeah, it is. But it's, it's a good device. It's it's reliable in my opinion. It's rugged. The battery life is great. Yeah. But I can see how you know a smaller form factor. Yeah. It's, it's easier, appealing. Right. Easier to put somewhere. Yeah. Right. So I can see. Have the, a lanyard. You can yeah. Hang it on, around your neck. Yeah. No, I definitely see the benefit there. Very good. So Odin LT. This is a 320. Coming also in the 640. Yes, 640 is uh, okay. coming out. 384 as well, or just a no 320 okay. and uh, 640. Okay, very good. Well, Steve, thank you so much. Pleasure as always. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you next year. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully, we'll get a 445 at some point uh, for some testing. And uh, yeah, the 1280 by 24 is like that will be the new 640 basically, right? I mean, that's pretty much, yeah. So pretty much. We're going you, up. You're going, going see, up the road. You're going to see 640 prices come down. Very good. That's uh, great to hear. Yeah. So. Steve, thank you. My pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. Awesome. We're here at the Infrared Outdoor uh, booth, and we have Angelo who's going to run us through what Infrared is coming out. And as you guys have, uh, as you guys can see, uh, we have three different products in front of us, and I think there's one more we want to cover. So it's quite a bit. Uh, you guys are made made some buzz throughout the year, like 2022, yeah. with your 12, 80, 10, 24 sensor. Uh, I've seen plenty of video out there, and it's pretty pretty mind blowing the, yeah. the quality. And I think it's ultimately that moment everybody was waiting for in the thermal thermal, thermal community, right? right. The, the next step up, and yeah. uh, I think that sensor kind of delivers on that. Yeah. But before we jump to that, um, sure. do you want to cover me personally? I looked through the bolt, and uh, the bolt image quality was really. Uh, Really good, I thought. It's a 64480 sensor, I think. And then, uh, you know, the, the Bolt um, uh, market, I think, we, we've seen some other uh, devices, even the 1280, where the, the mount is, you know, maybe not as as uh, suitable for a Bolt action rifle. Yeah. So yeah. maybe we'll start covering that yeah. if you don't mind. Definitely. All right. Um, so yeah, so uh, big, uh, big change or update to the Bolt family uh, is the TL35 V2. So we improved the display, and we also added an audio recording function. So it's a, a crisp clear audio and improved display, um, as well as we will have an optional Bluetooth rangefinder. So it's a 1,200-yard rangefinder that uh, communicates wirelessly, whereas previously you had to hardwire a rangefinder um, into something like the Mark I. Right. So. Tell me about the display, because that, that stood out to me, like it's really crisp, like yeah. you can get a really good image with it. So we went from an LCOS uh, to an AMOLED or an LED based display, okay. so you're going to get better contrast, uh, better refresh rate, Yeah. Uh, it's going to perform better in uh, cooler weather as well, so all around kind of image optimized, uh, better display, and then the rangefinder tying in to kind of round out the product. Um, you mentioned the mounting flexibility. So the bolt's been very popular in, in a platform where you know maybe you have to use rings, you can't put a rail on it like an old Model 70 or something like that, and you have all that real estate and the extra eye relief. So it kind of is a uh, very versatile product right. for any kind of gun. What I noticed, uh, you have a menu option in there, um, which changes the gain. I think is that you know you can start depending on what your preference is, and I've seen now you know plenty of different thermal scopes. Some of them, they're rather noisy, yep. so pretty grainy, and I think that's a gain. A gain. I said this to one, it's like a super smooth image. Yeah. So yeah, depending on the user preference, I think you can really set, you know, do you prefer like the super crisp image and or the, the, the smooth option? And me personally, I think the smooth one was pretty, was pretty good and, you know, going somewhere in between. But uh, I like the menu, like how you are able to navigate through. Um, obviously, like I mentioned, the, the image quality and the display quality is phenomenal. Yeah, so part of what Infrared Door has done a, uh, a very good job of is giving users that flexibility to adjust contrast, gain, and there's also an ultra clear function, which is essentially a heightened sensitivity depending on environmental conditions. So if you go out uh, on a clear, cold night, you may not need as much gain or contrast right. to get the image you want. Right. But if it's rainy, if it's uh, high humidity, you can turn the ultra clear on or you can turn that gain up and right. kind of fine tune things. So. Retail um, on the on that new version Bolt? The uh, re uh, TL35 V2 $37.99, uh, okay. and then the rangefinder will be an additional option on top of that. Okay. So same price as before, just uh, with better display and better audio right. recording function. And I'm guessing that the 1280 being a little bit of a the topic, I think the topic for Shot Show 2023, 
Do you guys have any plans to introduce that thermal sensor size in other product families? Perhaps down the road, uh, but there's a lot that goes into that product that's Common. specific to the 1280. So okay. display size, IP right. size, lens size. Okay. All these are kind of unique to that product. Okay. So it, it's currently not something that would go in this form factor. Okay. Down the road, obviously, we're going to expand that. I figured. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, which one do you cover next? The Mate, maybe? Yeah, since so we, we talked about production we'll go, a little bit. We'll go talk about the Mate. Um, so our Mate series is a thermal clip-on. So it uh, mounts directly to the objective of your day scope with an adapter that's included. And you can also use our uh, RQD mount that so we sell for the Mark One if you want to direct mount that to a rail. Okay. Um, so this is a 50 millimeter 640. Uh, it's optimized for use up to a 10x day scope. Um, if a customer wanted to pull this off and use it as a handheld scanner, there's also an eyepiece adapter that'll kind of optimize that. Because if you've ever looked through a clip-on without a scope, the display is quite small because right. it's designed to be looked at. Right. Um, so that's so you, said, you said it's optimized for 10x day 10 scope? Power, yeah. So um, are there any other options coming down the road? or So perhaps down the road, what has to happen with a clip-on is the display has to be able to be zoomed in on. So there's multiple settings that will allow different power okay. ranges. Um, so. Again, what you're doing is essentially making your screen bigger with your day scope. So you reach a point to where, you know, you can go past 10 power, but, but it's not going to be. Yeah. You're going to you're going to lose performance. Right. So right. Um, one really unique feature, uh, you know, if you get into a larger bolt gun where you may not, you know, be comfortable reaching out or you don't want to reach out, they've taken the controller. Oh, I've seen it's that. magnetic. So this will charge when it's placed on there, but there's yeah, an adapter. Oh yeah, there's a yeah there's a little pin there. But there's an adapter you can place this, you know, wherever to make it more ergonomic and comfortable to That's use. That's pretty cool. So, automatically charges, as I said, goes right on there. Um, and, and then you guys have different adapter sizes, I'm guessing, for different uh, objectives? Yes, there's lenses. one adapter and then there's rings inside. Um, and oh, I see. important thing to remember on those is a lot of people say, oh, I have a, a 3 to 12 by 56. Right. Well, that's your ocular or your, uh, your, your, your lens feet, size. Right. You yeah. have to measure the outside, but there's adapters to... Uh, Got it. And then we have a whole uh, range of, of diameter sizes on the, on the website. So that right now is a 640, you have that in 640 and 3D4, I'm yeah. guessing? We have a 640, 50 millimeter first. Down the road, we'll have a 3D4 function, okay. um, probably closer to spring. And then to round this up, I think retail price of that? Uh, you are at sixty-five hundred dollars okay. on the six forty fifty mil. Okay. Um, right. And then last thing we got here in front of us is the RH fifty Pro. So you're probably familiar with that form factor uh, in the Mark One. Um, what we've done is added a zoom lens. So much like we did with the zoom handheld, we now have an optical zoom function. So a twenty-five to fifty millimeter uh, six forty sensor. But you can intuitively switch that over, increase that once you've uh, maybe detected a coyote and you want to go in for a shot, be a little more precise, you can do that. And then your function, your uh, focus function is the same uh, zoom ring as well, right. so it's all built in. So is that running off one thermal sensor or is that multiple sensors? One sensor, one sensor. and sensor. there's uh, the lens is what changes okay. on, the, okay. on the front of the unit. Yeah, I played around with it earlier a little bit. Um, I think it has a short learning curve, but uh, the emphasis I think is on short so, um, because you have the focus adjustment basically on the same as the, the, yeah. uh, the uh, zoom. One thing, if you notice, when you change that field of view, the top of the screen, it will the icon will change, and it'll also tell you which way to turn to get to a certain focal length. Interesting. So when you go all the way to 25, it'll tell you to go back to the 50, and it'll highlight where you are. Interesting. Uh, does it have similar options like the, the board in terms of gain adjustments and so yeah, forth? Yeah, all those user functions. Uh, same uh, menu structure as the current Rico. Um, so if you're familiar with those products, you can jump right in and you'll be uh, off the races with the, with the Pro. All right, then retail on that one? Uh, right at 6000 on that one. Okay. All right. Last but certainly not the least is the, uh, your flagship yeah. 1280. Let's see if sensor. I can uh, wrangle one on a rifle here. Might have to pry it, pry it off somebody's hands. You've looked at that. Uh, have, you, have you seen one? Have you looked at one outside yet, or just inside? Uh, just inside. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I just uh, put this in the backpack over there and we don't talk about this anymore? <laughs> take it home for a week or two. Yeah. <laughs> just take it for a spin. Image quality is pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, so uh, 1280, 1024, um, 75 millimeter F1 lens, so getting a lot of energy to the sensor. 
the display is a 2560 by 2560 one inch display. So it's much bigger, much more pixel density. Also OLED or is it? It's an AMOLED, yeah. yeah. And there is a, the eyepiece has an optical prescription in it to, uh, with a lens set to actually create that you know, crystal clear, ultra wide field of view. Yeah. Um, if you notice, if you get that comfortable and then move the move the scope away from your eye, even a foot or two, you can still see that reticle. Yeah, the eye relief is really good. Yeah, you can put that on a tripod and be five feet behind it and you still yeah. see the, you know, even in the middle of the day. So, um, you know, there's a lot that, the 1280 sensor is obviously one thing, but the lens and the display and the eyepiece all tie into the, the complete and package. Like you mentioned, the eye relief is usually something that's kind of awkward because on both actions often and other, other products of the, uh, of the industry on the market, you have to mount them pretty far back, yep. otherwise you have the eye relief issue. And so it's, it's a bit bit awkward how far it sits back. But this one, like you said, I mean, you can be back about uh, you know this far or full uh, full tight pic, uh, image display. Yep. Um, in terms of battery life and so forth, I know and I've seen this on a, on a test unit I have right now. Um, so you have this port. Is this running off to your uh, CR one two three? So or? that's an IBP one pack. So it's the same as in the Mark One series. Okay. So it's a quick disconnect pack. Okay. That's a uh, forty four hundred milliamp hour okay. lithium ion capacity, um, and then you can also run it on USB. What do you uh, do? You know, like runtime in terms of uh, the one, one charge for yeah. hours. Okay. Very that's good. going to range too. It comes with a range finder, so that's going to dictate battery life, uh, streaming, all those things. But uh, Recording, internal recording, audio yeah. and video? 128 gig internal recording, uh, okay. image and audio, uh, as well as streaming. And I'm guessing the same thing uh, for the Rico. Yeah, they all have image and video capture. Uh, capacity size is going to vary. Um, this by far has the, the most right. capacity. But all uh, these in are general, image, uh, video and audio yep. recording? Yep. Very good. Yep. Um, Sweet. The, the microphone is improved on this unit as well, uh, similar to what the TL35 v okay. Is done so crystal clear audio. Do you do any uh, thermal hunting, you personally? I do as much as I can. I uh, I live in the Northwest, okay. so I come down to Texas, and every time I come down, we, we definitely make a habit. What's of your preferred? Out. You know, I really like the Bolt, uh, the the TH fifty C TL thirty five. I like um, obviously the twelve eighty. Yeah. Somebody's gonna be lying I'm to you sure, if they say they don't like that, right? I'm sure a lot of people like that. Right. But um, then there's a price point to it. Yeah, and, and I gotta remember not everybody can just go grab these and go no, hunting. But not everybody I, can do that. You know, I think that's the beauty of, of, <clears throat> of our product portfolio now at Imprey Outdoors. We have everything covered. So, you know, you don't have to buy this, you don't have to buy that. You can you can find something that fits into your need and your budget. Um, but the, the Bolt series is, is a hard one to beat in terms yeah, of- Yeah, right uh, now, just looking at the different options, right? I mean, obviously the 1280 sensor, that's, that is where we need to go, all yeah. of us. Yeah. But not all of us have $18,000 laying around. Yep. Um, so looking at the different options and image quality, usability and so forth, I like the Bolt the best probably. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fan favorite around the shop. Yeah. Um, everybody likes the Bolt and, and um, you know, it's, it's hard to beat. We've got multiple, you know, if you want a 640, we've got it. 384, we've got it. Now we've got the range finder. You know, it's really got a good feature set. The battery life is, is wonderful. Um, it's got a dual power um, function where you internal battery, you can put an external battery in the side here. Yeah. And you can also power it via USB. So yeah. you've got three options. Um, you're about 11 hour runtime with, uh, with the crazy. internal batteries, so. I already asked you a ton of questions, but la one last one. How do you get the uh, image uh, images or video files basically off the, off the scope? Is it the USB-C connection? Is that you can you plug it in, okay. it'll show up as a drive, okay. or you can use the Emperor Outdoor app. Okay. It's extremely fast, you can just pull them off through a Wi-Fi connection. So this right. actually acts as a Wi-Fi hotspot for streaming or data transfer. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's it, Inferior Outdoor, guys. Uh, again, my favorite, probably the Bolt TL. 35, uh, fantastic image quality. I think it's a great form factor. And uh, that's probably my first pick, unless I win the lottery next week and I change my Well, maybe mind. next time I come down, we'll take the 1280s out. And, uh, anytime, you know, sir, anytime. I'll bring, I'll bring them to you and you got the land and we'll go chase some pigs. Sounds good. All right. Angelo, I appreciate it so yeah, much. Likewise, Thank thanks for coming by. Hey guys, we're here with uh, Ryan um, from Visor and uh, we have another Infrared product. And this is the Infrared, uh, I think fast, FAL 19, so you, yes. how you say that? Yes, FAL 19. Uh, so I have that actually, I have a test unit, or kind of like a pre-production uh, unit, uh, and I've been using this now for a while, you guys should have seen one or two videos on my channel. Uh, as a matter of fact, this past weekend, I've taken a bobcat with it during the day, which is pretty fantastic. 
didn't record that unfortunately. Uh, um, I have the recording afterwards. But uh, yeah, no, okay. it has been a, a, a fun product. Uh, we also have just um, you know covered another product. I think coming I mean, uh, you know from from a different brand, but right. we see more thermal reflex sites coming on the market. I personally think it's a it's a pretty damn good. I uh, I think uh, it's awesome. I mean, this is one of my favorite things that I've messed with. Everybody here that's been messing with it, you know, it's something that they've never seen, touched, felt. Right. Um, and you don't really know what it's doing until you actually put it in your hands and you're starting to look through it and see what it does. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible to me. Yeah, the, to me, like, you know, unique selling point for, for a product like this, is, to me, it's, it's the hybrid and the right. overlay, right? So you have a daytime uh, optic and a reflex side where you basically have to see regular uh, um, uh, view through the scope and then you overlay the thermal. Right. Whereas all the other thermal scopes in the market, I mean, you're talking about ultimately looking at a display, mm -hmm. right? and then you see a, a full thermal image, but you don't have the, the hybrid view. Right. So the big selling point to me is, is exactly that. Um, the, the few things from, for me using this now for a while is one, I think the, the image quality was uh, better than I expected. I think it's a 384 yeah. sensor, is that correct? Yes. And then uh, uh, second, uh, Jerry, or the, the second um, observation I had is, even in full night, I wasn't quite sure that like, could you use that at, at full nighttime, basically for scanning and so forth in the hunting um, uh, scenario. Well, as a matter of fact, the first two hawks I took with it was ex exactly that. I think the full night is great because yeah. you're, something like this in this environment, there's a lot of light noise and there's a lot of people here. So obviously there looks like there's a ton of targets. Um, but at nighttime when everything's black and then all of a sudden you see a pop of green, it like really shines and you know yeah piques your attention to take a closer look at it yes yeah, so at the end of the day you, you have a, you have a site you can use during the day as a regular red dot right and you can go out and do that or you can do it during the day and, and you can activate the thermal you have the overlay so you... the other thing about being able to do that is sighting it in now you don't need a thermal target uh tin foil or something put up you can just go put up a normal target and you can see straight through and see your target and be able to that's exactly it what it is i, I sighted in the red dot first um uh, the thumbnail wasn't even on in that case. So just the red dot sighted it in, I think, of 50 yards or something. Right. And then I aligned the reticle from the from the thermal um, component just with the red dot. Right. The, the yeah. tricky part was a little bit. Um, I didn't quite figure out uh, right away that you can adjust the brightness in the red dot. The red dot was rather you know big and yeah. So you can make it, you can make it red or you can make it green. Yeah. So uh, I had, and had a little, a little bit, bit of a uh, challenge aligning the, the reticle right with it, but. I ended up just turning off the red dot a little bit, and then moved it a little bit more, yeah. and put it back on, and so forth. But yeah, so um, now you have now you have a daytime uh, side. You can go out, or you can continue your hunt into the night. Uh, you switch uh, different thermal modes. Uh, you have you have outline, you have uh, full overlay, and then you have basically a white heart and a black heart. Yeah. And those two modes are ultimately your, your full nighttime vision. Yeah, yeah. Modes, right. So the other cool thing that a lot of people have been bringing up is. Um, being able to use it while also wearing night vision goggles. Like if you're wearing a set of a helmet cam or something, like say you're doing some kind of something tactical, right. you, don't, you don't need to be flipping them up or turning them off or moving them or putting it on another eye. You can see through full night vision with that reticle. Right, that's awesome. Uh, one big question everybody had, and I wasn't able to answer because I didn't have that information, but the retail price? The retail price is $39.99. Okay, so right around 4000 which I think as a decent price, you know, uh, given that you're getting a 384 thermal sensor, mm -hmm. you're getting a, a reflex side, you're getting this hybrid mode. Uh, and even though it's yeah. 384, I mean, looking through it, I mean, even in this crowd, at, yeah. you know, far, far away, I mean, you can see, you can see people's faces. Yeah, no, I had, uh, I was able, like, full nighttime, had it, I think, at White Hot. I was able to see out my feeder at my property, like, I think it's 150 yards out. I was okay. able to see that fine. I, I felt there was, was plenty to, for scanning. For, for my use cases, I feel like I can use this day and night. Yeah. And like I said the other day, um, you know, this bobcat coming in it was pretty awesome. Um, I'm really the, excited the, the about it. The one thing, the recording options, I think it's something, you know, people have been, uh, gotten accustomed to, which is like onboard recording, these kind yeah. of things. But I also know that this is a new product for Infi Ray, so uh, something you guys are still you know, working through, and I think there's, there's more features hopefully over the time we can see. Right. So. Infure again, it's the Fast FAL-19. Yeah, Fast FAL-19. FAL-19. Is that going to be a FAL-25 or 50? So is it, that's a possibility because this is part of our Fast series, is what, it, is what okay. it's called. The Fast 
thermal fusion series. Okay. So I'm assuming with it being series, there's going to be a lot more options coming. Okay. So more more products to come in this in this uh, product family. Uh, this one, the first one, FAL 19. Like I said, I I have it. I get to play around with it right now. Maybe I even get to keep it. I don't know. But uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited also about. Just you guys getting this out in the market, uh, other companies following suit, more competition is always good for us customers. Yeah. So, uh, really looking forward to it. Ryan, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Infiray, check it out. Fast FAL 19.